Alright, look. Hit the like button, hit the sub button, and hit the notification bell. You understand me? Subscribe to my channel, join this Fisk Unit Army, and get Fisk Unit tough. Now listen, we got to speak on the little pigeons out there in Philly. That filth, that slop, the gum on the bottom of my shoe, Philadelphia Eagle team. We got to talk about them because that was the buzz of the draft. That was the buzz of the draft. Oh, look what the Eagles did. The Eagles got, the, the, what, what are they calling it? Uh, Phila Georgia. Ain't that what they calling it now? Phila Georgia. They, they got all these Georgia players and everything. Well, I'm here to tell you. And I want to speak for all Giants fans when I say this. I, I want everybody to listen to me carefully. We don't give a damn. We don't care. I speak for all Giants fans. Philly. We don't care. Philadelphia is like a female. They really are. The Eagles are like a female. You know how women think that they are the everything. They think that what they do, what they got on is just like the earth is just supposed to stop moving because she got on a nice outfit. Or everybody's just supposed to stop and, and sob and get tissues and Kleenex when she has a problem. She just like she she just thinks that everything about her life is the end all be all. Like she's the showstopper. That's Eagle fans. Eagle fans act like they the only team that had a good draft. The Eagles act like they the only team that acquired new assets over the offseason. The Eagles act like they're the only team in the NFL competing for a Super Bowl. They really think that they can't be touched. Well, I got news for you. The Giants about to put their hands on them next season. I'm going to simplify this for you. What they say in the military, simplify. Ain't that what they say in the military? I'm going to simplify the situation. Football is a very, very simple sport. It's not like basketball. It's not like baseball. You see, basketball requires a lot of finesse. A lot of things have to go right in basketball. You got to win seven games. You got to hope role players like the Kyle Corvers and the J.R. Smiths don't ruin LeBron James' legacies. You know, a lot of things got to go right in a basketball game for you to win consistently baseball don't even get me started you got to hit a freaking ball coming at you 100 miles an hour and then you got to hope that the outfielder can't catch it when you hit it it's complicated the best part about football is it's simple who's your coach who's your quarterback that's it that's it who's your coach who's your quarterback i watched belichick and brady run through a lot of great teams you see the eagles think they're the only franchise that has talent the eagles think they're the only franchise that's had a super team you know i watched ben roethlisberger and mike tomlin have the triple b's it was it, it was martavius bryant it was antonio brown Le'Veon bell big ben they had three pro bowl all pro um freaking linemen you know what I'm saying? They were great. Had the defense to go with it, too. They, 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 those Steeler teams that Ben Roethlisberger wasted in his prime were excellent. Had everything you can ask for. And what would happen when they ran into Belichick and Brady? Belichick without coach, Brady without play. Never failed. It never failed. What happened to the Chargers when they had LaDainley and Thomason and Sean Merriman and, and Sean Phillips and Quentin Jammer and, and all and Lorenzo Neal and Vincent Jackson and Mario Charm and Chambers, Chris Chambers, all those great players that the Chargers had back in the day. They ran into Belichick and Brady. Brady outplayed Phillip Rivers and Belichick outcoached, I want to say that was Marty Schottenheim. That's what happened. You know, I see this happen all the freaking time. You get these teams with a lot of talent and they think they can't be touched. I watched the Green Bay Packers win 15 games. I watched the Green Bay Packers win 15 games in 2011. Clay Matthews and BJ Raji and, and Charles Woodson, all these great players. And they ran into Coach Coughlin and Eli Manning, and they lost because Coach Coughlin outcoached the Clapper 
or whatever he does, Mike McCarthy. And Eli Manning outplayed Aaron Rodgers. And the point I'm trying to get to you is this. It does not matter how much talent the Eagles have. It does not matter. Because just like what you see in the AFC, how the Buffalo Bills always have more talent than Kansas City, but they lose to Mahomes and they lose to Andy Reid. It doesn't matter when you have the coach and you have the quarterback, you're going to win. And the bottom line is Brian Dable is a better coach than Nick Sirianni. And Daniel Jones is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. And that's that. We're not going to overthink this. We're not going to go position for position. We're not going to do none of that. I know the Eagles coaching staff is terrible. They lost a quarter. They lost both coordinators. And Nick Sirianni is a bozo head coach to begin with. Jalen Hurts and Daniel Jones have the same amount of good seasons as professional athletes. One. Or if you want to be technical, Daniel Jones' rookie year was probably better than the one he had last year when he threw 24 touchdowns in 12 games. But nobody wants to talk about that. But I, I, I'll be nice and not bring that up. I'm still waiting for Jalen Hurts to throw 24 touchdowns in a game in a season like Daniel Jones did. I love how Jalen Hurts is so much better than Daniel Jones, but Daniel Jones did in 12 games with bums around him what Jalen Hurts couldn't do in 16. Make it make sense. At some point, let's call a spade a spade. The Giants coaching staff is immaculate. Wink Martindale is a defensive mastermind. Mikey K is an offensive mastermind. And Brian Dable is a great head coach. And Daniel Jones does every single thing you can think of on a football field better than Jalen Hurts. And that's just a freaking fact. Oh, well, Jalen Hurts is a better runner than Daniel Jones. How? Y'all ain't see Daniel Jones stiff arm that dude in the playoff game in Minnesota? You ain't see how... Didn't Daniel Jones have more rushing yards than Jalen Hurts? If not, it was very close. And as far as pass production goes, this, uh, Daniel Jones led the league in fewest turnovers, throwing the bums. He don't got Devontae Smith and all these guys. So what I'm trying to say is this. I get it, Eagles. You have this dream team, all these Georgia players and everything. But it's not going to matter because when it's all said and done and the smoke clears, Daniel Jones is better than Hurts and Brian Dable is better than Nick Sirianni. We're not concerned. That's the most simplest way I could put it to all Giants fans who are worried about the defensive line and worried about the, the running back they just got. Everybody's worried about the talent on the Eagles. And I'm here to tell you, the same way Mahomes and Andy Reid continue to beat the AFC, the same way Brady and Belichick used to beat up on the AFC, is the same way the New York football Giants are going to beat up on the Eagles. We have the better coach. We have the better quarterback. And at the end of the day, that will prevail. And if there's any Giants fan watching this video or listening to my voice right now that doesn't believe in that or you lack faith after what Daniel Jones and Dable just did last year, go root for the Eagles. Or better yet, go root for the Jets. They just got Aaron Rodgers. Go over there. We don't want you right here. We don't want no suckers in this fan base no more. I made semi. I made semi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I made semi passes for y'all. I made a half a pass for y'all last year because we suck for so long. But if there's any Giants fan out there that still has a, a defeated mentality, that still walks around with the head in the stand, who still don't look Eagle fans or Cowboy fans in the eyes, if there's still those punk Giants fans out there with that negative defeated mindset walking around, get them out the fan base. After the year we just had, the draft we just had, the free agency we just had, if you're still a negative Giants fan who doesn't believe this team could win the division next year and compete for a Super Bowl next year, get out the fan base. We don't need you. We don't want you. We don't want to see you no more. We don't want your energy to suck the air out of us who believe in the team. We're not scared of the Eagles. We ain't scared of the Cowboys and Washington. Y'all don't even exist. Y'all not allowed at the grown folks table. Go sit with the children. 2023, the Giants are going to win a division. And in 2023, we're going to be competing for a Super Bowl. And that's that. I don't give a damn if they go resurrect Reggie White. I don't care if they go get Randall Cunningham to play backup quarterback slash wildcat packages. And I don't care if they resurrect Buddy Ryan to call the defensive plays. The Giants will beat the Eagles next year and win this division. And that's that. Bottom line. I ain't got nothing else to say. 
Subscribe to the unit if you're rocking with me. My name is Fist Vegas, and I approve this message. <laughs>